Good morning. Yesterday at uh, Monk's Yard, the church I go to, um, we were thinking about prayer evangelism, about praying for people and speaking blessing over their lives and looking for opportunities to interact with people, serve people, ready for any opportunity to speak to them about the Lord Jesus. And thinking so much about how we reach people who are lost almost inevitably took me to the lost chapter of uh, Luke, which is Luke chapter 15, in which Jesus tells uh, three stories in response to what the ta- the uh, um, Pharisees and scribes were murmuring. In chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. And in response to that, Jesus told them three stories about lost things. This is, this is what we were talking about, that actually we have to relate to people who are outside the kingdom in order to bring them in, in order to find them. Um, the tax collectors and sinners were not religious. They, they really believed because of the work they did or the, you know, mostly, and the, or the lifestyle they had that they were rejects, Uh, so they congregated together. They met together, they didn't meet with the religious leaders because they would have been rejected. But Jesus met with them. Jesus befriended people who were not welcome in good, God-fearing society. And he told them these three stories to show them, to show them, that his ministry, that the, impo- the people to look for were the ones that were lost, not the ones that thought they were found. And he, and he told these stories, the story of the lost sheep, the story of the lost coin, and the story of the lost son. And I woke up this morning thinking about the lost son, because one of the things we talked about was how to how to reach people uh, without making them feel trapped or got at or pursued that our our reaching out to people had to be genuine now in the first two in the sheep and the and the coin the sheep are not well they they are thinking in a way but they're not think they're not they don't have a conscience they don't have the same um, motivation for uh, for running away. Uh, <coughs> probably the lost sheep just followed its nose, the nicest grass, and found itself uh, far away from the rest of the flock. And the shepherd had to find the sheep and bring it home. The coin is inanimate, of course. The coin didn't even know it was lost. The coin, well, and and there are some people who have so little God consciousness they are not aware that they are lost. So that's two different cases. But the lost son, the lost son had lived in his father's house, growing up and everything, and he knew what it was like to be loved by a loving father. And he treated his father very badly and said, virtually said to him, I don't want to wait till you're dead to get some money to live my life the way I want to live it. Can you sort out the inheritance now so I can enjoy it while I'm young? Is basically what he said. And he went off and he lived just the way he wanted to live, frittered away all that money. And eventually reached the point where he was starving. And he was doing things he had never thought he would ever stoop to do in order to survive. And then he thought about going home. Now I think that the thought about going home is incredibly difficult for someone in that position because he knew what he'd done. He knew how, how dreadfully ungrateful and, uh, and wicked he'd been to his father. He knew what he'd done. He knew he'd made his father sort out the affairs and give him his half the inheritance. 
he, he knew what he'd done. He knew he'd treated his father terribly. And he knew, he expected, he expected that when he walked, came back, he would not be treated the same way he had been treated. He didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve restoration to his situation as son. And I think it took him a long time till he got over his pride, his fear of the consequences, his shame and embarrassment, his independence, his, his self-will, and his, I mean, very few people like to discover that they're wrong. I'm sure that he thought when he took the money and when, you know, when he began to run out of it, that those friends that he'd made would help him. But none of them did. They abandoned him. When the money was gone, they didn't want to know. And I think he was surprised. I think he thought all the wisdom his father had taught him was inaccurate and wrong. It took a lot for him to turn round and go home. But thinking about evangelism, the father did nothing except wait. Wait for that moment when the son came to his senses and began to come home. And once he saw his son afar off on his way home, he knew the decision had been made. He knew the son was coming home and he ran to meet him and forgave him and restored him without the son even having to ask. Now this is, this is the kind of evangelism that we have to pursue. We have to realize that God has put into every person an empty hole that only Jesus can fill. He's put inside every person a longing for the things of God. Most people have buried that so deep they don't even realize it's there. But given a chance, the desire for God, the desire to be forgiven, the desire to change will come to the surface. And the father waited for that moment. My time is up. Think about those three stories. Think about how they relate to your life as you seek to, to reach out to others with the good news that Jesus loves them and that there's forgiveness for anything they've done, however awful it is, there's forgiveness for it. Even if people have directly rejected God, there is still an open door in this time of grace. My time is up. Think about these things and I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.